shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I wish I could tell you that things have gotten better since last year, but you've gotten worse. I just need to know about the summer. We talked about this last summer. You're bone on bone now. That's what's causing all the pain. It's time for that knee replacement. How's the ticker? All right. Like seven new pipes are all pumping good now. Seven? <laughs> Only you, Horton. OK, let's say I do it your way. Once I do the surgery, will I be able to run next summer? Run? From California to New York? Most people can't do that on two good knees, let alone with a knee replacement. OK. so. If I'm going to run, then I need to do it first, pre-surgery. I did not say that. OK, but if I was going to. Look, I know it's tough to accept. But your competitive racing days, they're over. Make an appointment, and we'll start some pre-op workups. The mind is willing, the body is able. Heather? Running class, seven years ago now? I just started here a couple weeks ago. Do you want me to schedule a follow-up? No, no, we're all set. How have you been? I've been great. Hmm. Look, you probably don't remember this, but during that time, I had a lot of people in my life tell me that I was a loser and never gonna finish school. But you always told me I could. No matter what anyone said or what obstacles I faced. I followed your adventure since. What you're doing is very inspiring, Dr. Horton. Thanks, Heather. It means a lot to me. There are times in life when we're faced with a question. Where our treasure lies. Is it in the riches, in the glory of this world? Or do we invest our gifts in the heart of the Father, using them to meet the needs of others? For the Bible tells us that where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. I got this. Oh. Guess who got best blood today? You know what I always say? The mind's willing. Body is able, I know. I'm done. You're not done? No, I really am. Well. Can your resignation wait at least a day? I've still got a few miles to run, and I'm not carrying you. Not with these knees. Come on, you can do this. Come on. Sorry, girl! 
Mr. Extraordinary. Put me to shame. How many miles today? 16. Then the class joined me for six more. <laughs> what are you going to do with your summer off? I'm not sure yet. You know, if it's too painful, I can take that down for you. It's like rip it off a Band-Aid. Nope. Oh, come on, man. Three out of five ain't bad. Two of which you broke world speed records. You really believe it's possible to circle the Earth almost 25,000 miles? Anything's possible. It's official. You're nuts. I thought you just said I was extraordinary. Extraordinarily nuts. <laughs> well, it's the crazy ones that change the world, Mikey. What happened, Clark? Typical running class humiliation. <laughs> we'll let old Doc here talk you into anything sane or reasonable. <laughs> What's up? Have you ever tried to do so many things at once that you can't do any of them well? What's really going on here? Keep up with the bills, I'm gonna need to find a second job. But with tuition, getting the car fixed, and rent, I meant it. I'm done. I'm not letting you quit. Come on. You can't give up running, Clark. You're good at it. You're one of the few who's not afraid to get hurt or even bleed a little. You have a chance to compete in ultras and multi days. Maybe even beat one of my world speed records one day. Well, which one are you willing to part with? The uh, Appalachian Trail or the Pacific Crest? I want you to finish what you started. Hopefully, this will help. <laughs> I can't take this. It's too much. Well, bills have this persistent way of repeating themselves. Take it. Isn't your wife gonna be upset? Like, shouldn't you ask her? If there's one thing I know about my wife, her heart is generous. You know, if you would have told me six months ago when he had heart surgery, that it would turn out to be a blessing, I wouldn't have believed it. I have to admit I'm a little torn. About what? Well, I know the kids need a vacation with their dad, but, you know, I'd like to whisk them off all alone. Maybe it's a little selfish. Oh, you are the most unselfish person I know. Mm. What you could do, though, is fly them back to stay with us while you two take off together. Ooh, I like the way you think. <laughs> that is why I am the romance expert in this relationship. <laughs> Mom, where do you want these? In the next room. Where are you going? Bringing a little art class to the Daily Bread. Next week, I'm going to start teaching them how to make mosaics. Oh. I want to help. I've always wanted to learn how to do that. OK. You can come, too. Hi, Brandon. Hey. Where's Allison? Uh, I had a little spillage in the car. I'm gonna go grab some more. Oh, Brandon, were you able to clear the schedule with your coach? Yes, I uh, told him we'd be gone for a month and we'll be able to resume prepping for the fall when we get back. So where's this road trip starting? Springer Mountain, Georgia. Ah. And don't you tell your dad. Dr. Horton, this morning I felt impressed to write this note to thank you for all you've done for me. It's been a wonderful four years. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Hey, it's been great having you. 
I don't even recognize you. No, I'm kidding. I remember you from the first day. I'm teasing. Thank you. You're right. It has been a good four years, Peggy. <laughs> okay, okay. We're good, we're good. See you at graduation. Thank you. Uh, you I don't... No, no, no. So do you ever decide what you're going to do this summer? Maybe number four. Really? Yeah. <laughs> the Trans Am? That's awesome, man. What I'm thinking. Are you nervous? Me nervous? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> Here's the thing. If I can conquer the Pacific Crest Trail or survive the Barkley... Wait, but didn't you almost die a couple times in the PCT? No, no, no. That's living. <laughs> what do you love so much about running? It's a miracle of pushing beyond your limits. Beyond strained ligaments, stress fractures, exhaustion. It's the boldness of pursuing a dream that no one else understands except for you. And now, to present our special honors and awards, our esteemed professor, Dr. David Wood. It's my honor today that you get to hear from two of my dearest students, Rebecca Anderson, salutatorian, and Clark Zeeland, valedictorian. I've seen these two overcome seemingly insurmountable odds to succeed. And not just to get by, but as an old coach once encouraged me, to finish well. Today, these two define what it means to finish well. Becky. Thank you, Dr. Horton. If any of you ever wonder if you can impact a life, I'm here to tell you that you can. To share how much this place is. So meant have to you me. told Dave about the summer yet? The person I'll who tell him changed tonight. my life <laughs> is Dr. David Horton. Now, I know this is supposed to be my valedictorian speech, but I just have to thank Dr. Horton for being an inspiration. You can do it literally no matter what attitude. There's no one like you. After the Pacific Crest Trail almost took you out, most people would have given up, but not you. I only wish I could go with you on the Transamerica foot race, but maybe next year I will. I just want you to know that we're all behind you, Dr. Horton. We'll all be cheering for you. Yeah, do that. But are you out of your mind? You're gonna run across America. What, do you think you're Forrest Gump? I can do it. That's not the point. I thought after heart surgery and all the trouble that you were having with your knee, that you were done. Do you have any idea what you put us through every time you do one of these things? Mom, leave him alone. If he wants to go, let him go. Be quiet, Brandon. You be quiet. I'm the one that goes to bed alone for months sits next to you when you come back. Only for you to say, get away from me. Don't sit too closely because my body hurts too much. I can't do it again. I just, I can't, I can't do it again. Good night, Allie. Good night, Dad. Dad? Are you really doing this? Thinking about it. That's usually code for I've made up my mind. Well, it was just announced in front of 20,000 people. So what? You don't have to. I kind of wish you'd slow down. You're getting up there in age, you know? 
Thanks a lot there, kiddo. Just trying to keep it real. <laughs> I just don't want you to get hurt. Out there alone, mile after mile. I think about that a lot, you know? I won't get hurt. That's what you always say. Good night, Ellie. Love you, sweetie. What do you notice about these pictures? I have a beautiful family. She was playing Eve, the lead in applause here. I don't remember that show. You were running the AT. Brandon, the soccer tournament. You were running the PCT, Allison's 16th birthday. I took her out when I got home. <laughs> You know, the first time you did one of these things, do you remember what I told you before you left? That I hoped that you achieved your goal, but that you would be miserable and missing your family so much that you would never want to do one of these things again. This has nothing to do with whether I love or miss you guys. Uh, yeah, you're right. It has nothing to do with us at all. You've made it very clear where your treasure lies. That's not fair. Mm. Look, I don't know how to explain it, okay? I, I just feel like I'm supposed to go. Nancy, listen, this isn't, this, is, this isn't the easiest thing to try to explain. But I've been praying, asking. I've I just been sensing certain things about it. Even that sermon on Sunday. Were we even listening to the same message? I feel like God wants me to do this, to inspire people one last time, uh, teach people how to really live. Really, have you ever asked yourself if you're really teaching the right things? Look, all I can tell you is that just as I was praying, asking God to show me what to do, one of my former students came to me, reminding me how we can do anything despite our obstacles. Yeah. Is that God speaking, or are you just hearing what you want to hear? Well, then Becky, she gave me the card for graduation with a verse about how we're supposed to run with perseverance the race set before us. It, is that just a coincidence? You know, who am I to argue with God if that's the way that you really feel? Did you have something in mind for us to do this summer? No, nothing that matters. You can go off on your adventure. I'm sure that you're not gonna be missing anything here. Really? So I, I, can, I can go? Well, so I have your blessing. Yeah, if that's what you call it. I'm your wife, not your mother. I'm not gonna tell you what you can and cannot do, or even what you should, but I just hope that you can live with yourself when you get back. What does that mean? I just, I wish I could understand you. Understand why this is so important to you. I just need you to trust me and trust him to take care of me. What if I asked you to choose? It's either this or me. Please don't ask me that.
You're listening to 88.3 The Journey, the best in Christian radio. I'm your host, Barry Armstrong. And I'm Linda Armstrong, and today we have in the studio with us a very special guest, the legendary Dr. David Horton, who is getting ready to leave on his Trans-America foot race. Which, if you can believe it, begins in Huntington Beach, California, and finishes in Central Park, New York. <sighs> That's right. Goodness. Yeah. From sea to shining sea. <laughs> Tell us about the Trans Am race. How does it work? Well, each day is between 30 and 60 miles long. Um, all runners have to average 3.5 miles per hour each day or we're disqualified. And the runner with the least amount of accumulated time at the end wins. Assuming, of course, you finish. I always finish where I start. Ooh, you heard it, folks. How many days does this insanity take? 64 days. 64 days. From one end of the country to the other. Wow. Leave it up to Horton to do the impossible. What can I expect when I get back? I don't know. tonight, even if I did lose candy bar bingo. Hey, your loss is my gain. <laughs> I mean, literally, look, I think I've gained five pounds already. You could share, you know, Miss Champ. Yeah, right. You know you're talking to a food addict, right? Well, it's not time to go home just yet. Uh, it's late. No, it, it hasn't been the best day of mine. Uh, OK, present company excluded, Marcy. I just want to go home and go to bed. I mean that one that's cold, lonely, and dark. Well, see, that is exactly why you need therapy of the art club stuff. Yes. What is art club? I don't remember joining a club. First rule of art club, what happens in art club stays in art club. <laughs> what are you guys up to? I'm gonna get in trouble. Second rule of art club, no pooping on the party. <laughs> okay, 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 and no peeking. Okay. That's right, no oh. peeking. You do and I'll know. <laughs> I got eyes upside down and sideways. <laughs> she does. Nance, how long did it take your hubby to run that Pacific Crusty? Crest, 66 days, 7 hours, 16 minutes, average 40 miles a day, mm -hmm. Mexico to Canada. Oof. Uh, yeah. Rather average 40 hours of sleep every half day. Girl, mm -hmm. if my husband left me and the kids to do that, mm. I can tell you it'd be a whole lot colder at home than it was up there. OK. Open up. Oh. oh my goodness. It is just beautiful. You did this? I love what you do with the people that come here. <sighs> hmm. And what are those for? Thank <laughs> you. 
Broken ones do make the best art. Do it now. Do it. 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 Do It's just our supplies, sir. Classes start on Monday, and we were just getting everything ready. You'd be impressed by our diligence if you knew us. You have permission to be here? I have keys. Aren't you that lady whose husband's off doing some cockamamie run cross country? Oh, see? You had to bring that up. That's what this whole night was about, to help her clean forget. So sorry, I apologize. I admire someone who's that nuts and doesn't come out six feet under. <laughs> I'm gonna let you guys off with a verbal warning. Provided you pick up everything here. Coming back to check now. Y'all behave. We'll think about it. the extraordinary Dave Horton would have such a good payoff. <laughs> I'm proud of you, Dad. I know how hard these times ahead will be for you. Well, actually, I don't. I've never done this. I wish we could do this together, and I hope this isn't your last one. You've always been my hero. Just... Don't die out there. This is why you still can't hear. This is why you still can't hear. The master's call. The master's call. Хорошо, братан. С 
Sir, I haven't called much. Reception in the desert has been terrible. I'm in Vegas now. I've covered 340.65 miles so far. Only 2,565.35 to go. Tomorrow's big. We run uh, 55 miles. I really miss you guys. Zrosvits, you Americanids. You have allergies? Ha. Huh. Why are you crank? No, I was just, uh, just trying to connect with the family. Well, looks like you beat me in males today. Just not in running time, I suppose. Well, I'm only ahead of you by one hour, 70 minutes. And 14 seconds. But who's counting? <laughs> That's true. How about we run together later this week? Yes? Sure, yeah. Make you feel better? <laughs> sure would. I'll wait till now six to leave you behind. <laughs> All right. It's good? Sounds good. What I love about seeing each of you work is you get to take and give a tangible shape to these unknown pieces. So, let's get ready to begin. Nancy, the one that you helped me with last week, I sold it for $25 on the corner, down the street. I haven't seen 25 bucks in two years. Oh my gosh, that is great, Denise. When did you start doing these? My husband and I, when we first got married, we would travel a lot, and we would take these amazing trips. I would collect stuff on them. And then when we would come home, I would make a piece of art to commemorate the trip. Oh, this is going to make a great memento of that night. <laughs> what night? What'd I miss? Oh, just the night that you're Mama almost got arrested. Nina. What? <laughs> she caused it. I just wanted your mama to have a little fun for once. Speaking of, I think that you and the kids should go on that little trip. That's what I've been telling her, Neens. I planned that trip with your dad in mind. There's no reason to go to all those places that he's been without him. So what? He went without us. Come on, I have it on good authority that I am a total blast on vacation. There's no point in waiting on him to live our lives. Mm, she's got you there. You're right. There's no reason why we can't go somewhere fun. Why didn't you tell Dave what you had planned? Give him a chance to choose. Because I didn't want to know that he wouldn't choose us.
He's an educator, a motivator, a runner, and a thrill-seeking wild man. When he called in this morning, he talked about the difficulties of the desert. His next stop is Utah. But this morning, we have a guest with us in the studio, Becky. Becky is one of Dr. Horton's students who just graduated, and she's here because she has a story that she'd like to share with us. Becky, we're so glad that you're here. It's good to be here. Um, it was my freshman year of college. All right, everybody. What am I holding here? Yeah. Whatever it is, it's disgusting. <laughs> This is five pounds of fat. Ew. <laughs> yeah, you imagine how many of these we're carrying around with us, right? Each pound represents 3,500 calories. And how do we burn those calories? That's a question, anyone? Exercise? Say it with some conviction, man. Exercise. Exercise, exactly. In your textbooks, I want you to turn to page six. I believe that's near the beginning. Um, you, what's your name? Rebecca, uh, Becky. Becky, I like that. Can you read that first paragraph for me, please? Running is defined by the action or movement of a runner. To go quickly by moving the legs. Okay, okay, that's good, that is good. Um, Becky, I want you to rip that page out of the book there for me, please. Yeah, seriously, just rip it right out. Come on, Becky. Rip it. There, doesn't that feel good? Doesn't that sound good? Everybody, rip that page out of your book. Don't make Becky feel like she's the only one. You know what? Let's rip the entire chapter out. Beautiful. Rip the whole thing out. Yeah. There it goes. Doesn't that feel good? Rip the whole thing out. Look at you guys. You're exercising. Here's the reason. You can't learn about running out of a book. And you certainly can't burn any calories sitting on your rear ends. There's only one way to learn about running. By exploring God's glorious creation. How you feel? You're doing great, okay? You hang in there, baby. Here. Ready? Let's keep going. I believe in you. You're doing great. He's transformed my attitude, my health. Dr. Horton gave me the confidence to believe in myself. He helped me appreciate God's creation. And I'm a new person today because of that wild man. Hello. I've really missed you. How are you feeling? Feels like a pressure cooker out here, Nancy. My shins.
chain splints are unbearable at times. Also, I think I have tendonitis. I had to stop and stretch often just to keep it from hurting so much. My knee is swollen. My hamstrings are super tight. Today is a tough stage. Over 50 miles. I don't know if my body can hold up for the whole race. You say that every time, Dave. You're out there to finish. Now, you know what? I better get going. I need to grab some breakfast before we leave. Love you. Okay. What drives you to do this? In Russia, it's not like it is for you here. Yeah. Your family actually wants you here. They would not have it another way. But you are American. You already have good life. Why do you do this? Do it because I can. That's it? That seemed kind of... I don't know. Excuse me for saying... Hollow. I'm a teacher. Students look up to me because I... I do what I set out to do. I gotta lead by example. And, this God has given me this ability to run. You believe there is a God? I do. What makes you so sure? I know it every time I look around at creation. I know it every time he's there for me when I'm going through a tough time. I know it every time he speaks to me through his word. What do you mean, his word? The Bible. The Bible. I knew it the first time my wife told me she loved me. The day our daughter was born. First time my son called me daddy. Creations. It don't just happen, Sergey. They're designed. Hmm. Your family. They seem like something to run to. I'll see you tonight. Stop weighing yourself down with all that junk you keep picking up, man. Wait, did you just say man? I think you just said man. I can't begin to know what I'd feel like in your shoes. <laughs> I miss Mike when he's just down the street at work. Sometimes I think about sitting in on some of his kinesiology classes just to break up the day. <laughs> Pathetic, huh? No, no, that's love. When Dave calls, I barely get to say anything. Careful now. You have enough supplies for your art class. I don't know what I'm gonna do, Nina. Yes, you do. <sighs> Maybe Dave is giving you all that he can give you right now. What if it's not enough? You took vows, Nance. So did he. And when did serving God become not serving your family? I know that it feels like that. But if he senses that, that you don't respect him, that you don't... No, Nina, you have a husband that you can respect and somebody that actually wants to be with you. But where does not supporting Dave get you? I know. 
You're right. I knew this about him when we were young. But do you have any idea what's changed for you since then? Early in our marriage, I would go everywhere with him. I would meet him at all the stops. Then after we had kids, I had to stay home. Ever since then, I've just... I felt like I've been left out of a really big part of his life. Have you told Dave this? You need to tell him how you really feel, baby. This is 88.3, The Journey. Life, hope, music. We've got Dave Horton on the line. Tell us about your progress. I'm doing okay. Averaging about 45 miles a day. Some days are harder than others. But, uh, I'll be honest, this is, this is much harder than I expected. Maybe I am a little out of my mind. For waiting up for you, expecting you to come around. That's what families do. They don't give up on each other. So go ahead, sign the papers. Give up everything you and Lottie have worked so hard for. We pray for you. Pray that my body holds it together for the rest of the race. Pray that God gives me the strength to finish. Between the prayers and the word, it keeps me going. Any particular verse that's been inspiring to you? One has really stood out to me lately. Run with perseverance, the race set before you. Anything else you want your listeners and fans to know, Horton? Keep those letters coming. It's always encouraging to hear from friends.
Too slow, American. Too slow. Okay. Oh, really? I just beat the Russian. Is that what just happened here? Hey, you know what this reminds me of? Well, how we beat you to the moon. Oh, the moon? Well, I've never wanted to go to the moon, number one. And you're the skinniest fat man I've ever seen in my life. Guess I gotta stop beating you through the food line. Hmm? But you're getting fatter in every state. You should know this. Don't worry, the furnace is hot. I'll burn it off when I run today. Well, you and your chubby little furnace will always be behind me, so let's go. <laughs> me of you kids daily on the road. Here are two pieces I believe God pointed out to me just when I was missing you. Early birthday presents. Mm. That's cool. That verse you keep bringing up, the race set before you. I want to understand how it saves people. I never said it did. Although I will say there's been someone on the road. Sergey from Russia. I've been able to share about God with him. No, it probably doesn't sound like enough right now. God gave me this ability, and I haven't wanted to waste it. When did you decide that this was your only race? I mean, what, what about marriage? What about fatherhood? It, it even seems like teaching is more important to you than us. I just, I just guess I don't understand. Mom, we got a problem. <sighs> I'm sorry. I gotta go. I don't know what he was thinking. Trying to follow in Darrow Dad's footsteps? No. Then what were you doing? Why were you racing those boys? They were making fun of Dad, calling him cracked and crazy to do what he does. So I told them I could beat him. Mrs. Horton, he's gonna be fine. It's just a sprain. Nothing staying off it and icing it won't fix. All right, let's see how this feels. Okay, watch it. Can you update him? Thank you for everything, Doctor. Oh, no problem. 
I'm sorry I wasn't able to talk your husband out of the Trans Am. You tried? <laughs> Silly, isn't it? That he might be swayed over something that he never should have done? Yeah, that's my Dave. I know it was probably really difficult for him to hear that he'd never run like that again. Particularly after the knee operation. Can you try to get him to call in and schedule the surgery as soon as he gets back? Yeah. these races have been on you. While he's done so much to help us, you have too. I know you sacrificed a lot because of him. I appreciate that, Becky. I know my husband thinks the world of you. Did you hear my interview on the radio? I wasn't comfortable sharing everything on there, but with you, I felt like I should share this. It was right after high school and the brutality that usually comes with that for somebody like me. Years of being tormented over my weight. That first day of college, I had no intention of staying. I was just gonna go for that one day and prove that it was okay to quit. and then it would all be over. But then your husband, he took us on one of his runs. He didn't see me as anything other than somebody who was capable. He saw me for what I could be. And that's when I started to see myself that way too. What do you mean? I was going to end my life. But even though he doesn't always know what drives him, he drives us. Sorry, I told you I didn't see you as a hero. You are my hero. Always have been. I had no idea your doctor had given you that news. I wish you would have told me. But I get it. It would have made me try to stop you even more. I do love you, David Horton. Always will. I will celebrate your return.
What, something wrong with the chicken or something? I think we're supposed to stop and pray for Dave. Okay, let's pray. Hey, everybody! We have a prayer need right here and right now in the name of Jesus. We have to pray for this beloved woman's husband. If two or more are in agreement, yes, yes, Lord. Lord, maybe I heard what I wanted to come in here. Maybe I made a mistake. That I put your name on something you never wanted me to do. Have I been neglecting the treasures that you've given to me? Please don't let my family pay the price. You make this pain go away for one more hour. I promise you, I'll make things right. I don't understand these Americans. Hey. Hey, you. Rock collector. What do you think this is? Vacation in Cabo? Aren't you lucky? This is one of only three days I was behind you. Four. Wait a minute. Today's deadline. Did we miss it? You think I would just be getting here if we were behind? Yanni pay me my we can still make day's average, unless you plan on just sunning yourself for the rest of the day. You all right, man? Uh, I guess we'll see. Give it to me. Ah, oh, you don't have to. It's fine. Come on. Please. I don't know why you don't lighten this load. I think someone just did. Why are you helping me anyway? I'll still beat you. Let's go. Let's go, American. What did the doctor say? Where's my sternum? Thankfully, it didn't re-break, so... <laughs> See what you did there? You have four days left. You can't let it beat you, David. I won't. God's helping me. Got a guardian angel on my side here. God has got me helping you? I think so. I guess we will see you. God's using you, my friend. Thanks to your help, man. Pajalsta.
Dear Nancy, I've been thinking about you and the kids a lot. Remember Mountain Masochist? It was pouring rain, freezing. Mud in my eyes, ears, mouth, everywhere. I had strained hamstrings, shin splints, and blisters the size of half dollars on my heels. 50 miles in that miserable weather. I thought I was suffering badly. Then I saw you. You were soaking wet, shivering, near hypothermia. You looked like a wet rat. And yet you were there with a smile on your face. It dawned on me that you had been out there for eight hours braving the weather and freezing temperatures, handing me food and water bottles. I felt terrible for you. You always had a front row seat to my misery, and I'm sorry I put you through that. I know you recognize a lot of what I do seems self-inflicted. The truth is that everyone thinks I'm this extraordinary person for all these crazy things I've done. But the only person that I find to be truly extraordinary is you, Nancy Horton. You've always been my extraordinary woman. I think we all are moving to New York City. Oh, that's him. Hey, sweetie. Hi, Nancy. I wasn't expecting you to answer this early. Aren't you supposed to be running? Everybody's about to leave, but, uh... Coming home. Why are you hurt? away from you long enough. 
Dave, listen to me. You only have today and tomorrow. You can finish. You and the kids. They're way more important to me. My real treasures. I repeatedly put everything else ahead of you and them. Dave. I didn't give you up for the past 62 days for you not to finish. Nancy. Don't turn back. I want you to finish. Finish what you started. You have our blessing. Do you mean it? We'll be here when you get back. started this life together. I promised for better or worse, sickness and in health. The thing about love, it makes you push through even when there's pain. It makes you keep going even when you want to quit. It hopes all things and it believes all things and I believe in you. You persevere and you fight for what you love. I love you, David Horton. I will always be at our finish line.
take you so long? I've been waiting and waiting. First place? Of course. But I know you would finish. Because... Your God is good. Hey! <laughs> I promise this is my last extreme race. I know. I talked to the doctor and I know everything that's happened. It's not sucks. just because of that, but for you. <laughs> I realized on the road, I don't need racing anymore to truly live. I don't want to just start well with you, like I did 30 years ago. I want to finish well. That sounds extraordinary. I'm so sorry for hurting you. I love you, Nancy. I love you too, Dave.
Pray.